Okay, up and running. That board so we can see everything. All right, maybe that's a little bit better, easier. Yep. All right, so the goal of this video is to be able to look at a sinusoidal algorithm and be able to write that equation in 20 seconds or less. Uh, I am going to talk uh, for about a bit, a little bit here, about how to get to that point and uh, the things you have to understand so that when you're working with it, um, you have some literacy, not just some mechanical ability, but some conceptual awareness. Um, and to get at that, I think it's probably important, although not necessary, I think even with what we're going to do in this video, you'll be up and running. But it would be helpful if you're doing your part, I'm talking to the students in my class now, I did put out a video on what is a radian. Um, if you watched it, then you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Introduction to the unit circle, get you up and running with uh, some of the standard practices in the discipline. Um, have mentioned whether or not it's there yet in your noggin. That one radian is approximately 57.3 degrees. I think it's on your memorization sheet, which I hope you are looking at from time to time. These are all your responsibilities. My job is to tell you what's happening and to tell you, uh, I think the best piece of advice I ever got from a former colleague was tell them what it is, not what it isn't. So I'll just keep saying this is what's going on. And hopefully at some point you put the neurons together to have the lights go on. So we measure radius lengths from this place on the circumference of the circle, and one radian is about 57.3 degrees. All right, that's important. Next, we've talked about the unit circle, and repetitive conversations I think are helpful, extremely helpful. And so circumference of any circle is two pi or 6.28, 6.28 roughly radius lengths. All right, and that's going to tell you whatever that length is. And then the unit circle we're making, it, we're standardizing. We're saying it's one radius length. And that means that we can talk about doo -doo 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 -doo, where we are on the circumference of the circle. Why is that helpful? Because when we go to model those functions that I pointed at at the beginning of the video, degrees don't work so well. All right, so it's important to have a language system that takes triangles you know and i'll just draw a triangle here we're used to seeing triangles with that symbol and you look at that and you say oh that's helping us find the degrees of this angle but the ratios are the same this to this is the same as that to that those ratios are the same and now this arc length starts to look like that yeah, and it's just another method, just another method for hmm, determining 360 degrees. Okay, so 6.28 radius lengths is the same as walking around the circle once. Okay, and so from here, we start measuring radius lengths from there to here. All right, well, that's 180 degrees or 3.14 radians. We don't say radius lengths, we call them radians. And so if I take this distance from here to here, and I start and I, I know that's about the same. Well, then that's one radian. Two takes me out here somewhere. Three takes me to about there. So there's one radius length, two, three. And right there, halfway around, 3.14 or exactly pi, then we've got another language system for <laughs> looking at the radian, the ratios in 90 degree triangles. All right, so let's push this over here. And remember our goal, our goal is to be able to write that in 20 seconds or less. And we're coming back to it soon. Now we're coming over here. Let's get this one out of the way. Uh, let's move this over here. I don't have my cart. Or we'll use the desks. This out of the way. Should have had this done for you sooner. But 
Got to deal with it now. All right, so we're over here still. We're talking about getting some number sets. If you're going to understand a function, you got to have some feeling for some of the numbers associated with it to kind of put your feet in the concrete. All right, so we're measuring from here. Well, if this is 3.14, then straight up to 1.57, roughly. All right, so, you know, you, you can think of 60 degree angle. Right, a 60 degree angle is a little bit more than one radian, and this is about one and a half. So if you add one 60 degree and you added another 30 degrees, you're looking straight up. Right? And the sine function, we're gonna define in a moment, but we're just talking about where we are on the circle. Right? And the sine function is actually gonna be looking at the heights, you know, these heights. And so where is that height? If we start there, that's much lower, yes? It's actually at zero. And then the heights do what? In the first 90 degrees, they go up to a maximum. The heights go up to a maximum. And then the heights of those triangles, remember I'm drawing triangles now and I'm looking at, here's a reference angle, I'm looking at that height. And those heights are coming down back to where we started from in terms of height, back to zero, the midline, the midline is zero. Yeah, I think I've got it over here. Midline is, yeah, you can see that is zero. And then as we march up the circumference, we go to a maximum height of one. We come back to zero. We go to a minimum of negative one. And we come back to zero. So I hope you get a sense of up to the max of one, back to the starting altitude, three, 270 degrees, negative one. And back again, we get this trajectory, this shape. And of course, if we keep going around the circle, we're just replicating this. And those are called sinusoids. Now we could use the cosine command, but the cosine command is looking at the widths in a unit circle. They're looking at those widths. And I think when we're talking about modeling, you know, we can immediately see make maximums and minimums, maximums and minimums. And I think that's a, a vertical orientation in the brain. We could talk about maximum, let's see, you're looking this way, maximum widths, minimum widths, maximum widths, minimum widths. But I think it would be easier if we used the vertical orientation of the opposite side of the triangle, which is defined to be the sine function, and I can look at that with you right now here momentarily. We're getting to our goal of being able to write and model, but the sine function deals with angle to ratio. And so this is what trigonometry is about. In a right triangle, if you give me an angle, then those ratios are stored in your calculator. And there are some that we don't need a calculator for. Okay, and that is covered in the introduction to the unit circle. But just your typical three, four, five triangle, it's in some of the other videos, but the sine of this angle is four to five opposite to hypotenuse. The beauty of the unit circle is we make our hypotenuse one, and when you divide by one, things are a lot easier. So if I was to divide everything by one, I'm sorry, to make a one, I have to divide five by five, I have to divide three by five and four by five. And so looking at the sign of this angle, we just say four fifths. So that's really important. And in doing that, we're trying to gain some literacy here, almost ready to go over there and tackle that sinusoid. All right, so it's very important, very important that you start to think about what goes in this parentheses no matter whether it's a Greek symbol or the letter X, or whether it's, you know, some Greek symbol, whatever is in this parentheses represents what? An angle. And then when you draw those triangles, you're looking at the six ratios. You know, there are six side-to-side -side comparisons. I could do this one to this one, or I can do it backwards, right? We can do that six ratios. And those are the commands that you are going to start seeing as we develop this further this semester. Now, why am I doing this stuff? 
right? Most students would say, well, this isn't typical of an algebra one or an algebra two class. Well, as an instructor, especially at the calculus level, when students struggle with the foundations of these algorithms, then it's pretty hard to look at them at a deeper level. And so my line of reasoning is, when I see where people stumble, I wanna cover it earlier. I wanna talk about it in the context of distributed learning so the students have more time to try to process what they're looking at. All right? So that's why I'm doing all this work with radians because I've had very little success in having anyone answer what a radian is when they come into my calculus classes. All right, so we're starting that conversation early. Uh, some things that would be very helpful for your goal of gaining mathematical literacy is identifying stumbling blocks and then asking questions in class as to what's going on here. All right. So we've very quickly identified that in the unit circle, the heights are the command sine x and the widths are combined, are, are uh, the command cosine x. And these Pythagorean relationships of cosine squared plus sine squared equals one squared, it's gonna become very helpful. So I'm just planting a seed there. We're not gonna use that too much in the next five minutes. All right, so now we're finally at, how do we write these equations in 20 seconds? All right, so once around a circle, takes you back to where you started from. So that's called one revolution. This is one revolution, okay? And that's 360 degrees. And the sine function, the maximum occurs when you get up to 90 degrees. So this is a 90 degree location, and this is another 360 degrees later to get to there. That's a problem. All right, so let's look at that problem briefly. Getting to be a lengthy lecture, All right? So this is the first two-step calculation that you've encountered. Sine 1903 is a year. We've got to convert that into an angle and then construct the amounts that we see. All right, so if 1903 is going to be based on 90 degrees, then we got a bunch of revolutions over here I wish I had my science card, but we got a bunch of 360s. 360, 360, 360, 360, and then a half of them to get to here. All right, and that gives us this calculation for our second year in the year 2000. That's awkward. That's a lot of math. That And, and you know, if this was some planet or, you know, we were looking at maximum and minimum temperatures during the day or something, uh, Degrees don't work too well. But what does work is unwrapping the circumference and talking about pi over two, and then how we get to our next year, right? Because it's just a linear function that we're creating. Right? And it's not hard to link 1903 to pi over two. It's just x minus 1903 plus pi over two. And now I've got an angle. I can use this command. When I put 1903 in, I got the sine of pi over two. And I know that's one. And one is a real easy number to make bigger. All you got to do is multiply it by something. All right. So we want to convert these measurements. And I'm just going to start doing the problem for you now. And I'll change some numbers and we'll see how we'll pause the video and you'll get your repetitive practice starting now. All right. So what do I see? I see. Uh, I see, well, I'm not going to say 360. I'm going to say it's once around the circles. So that's 2 pi. There's another 2 pi. There's another 2 pi. And there's a half of one. Well, that sure seems like the change in angles. My change in angles is 2, 4, 6, 7 pi. 7 pi, that's my change in y. But my y's in this case are angles. But they're written in they're written in uh, radian measurement. And of course, I know from 1903 to 2000 is 97 years. And I know I can get rid of 1903 pretty easily. We've been writing equations of lines since day one. And 1903 
matches up to 90 degrees in radian measurement, and 2000 is seven pi further along, which is actually taking me to 15 pi over two as an angle, right? Here's pi over two, add a pi, I'm at three pi over two, add another pi, uh, I'm at uh, uh, th uh, five pi over two, five pi over two, then I'm gonna be at seven, then I'm gonna be at nine, so on, I just keep going around. And so the change is seven pi, to get from here to here, right? It's 14 pi over two. I'm taking longer with this one than I will with the others. The others will be just rapid fire. You pause the video and I'm gonna write the equations. All right, so that's the hard part. The easy part is saying, okay, we measure from what? We measure from the baseline. Oh, what's the number between 50 and 100? 75. Then instead of going up and down one, I'm going from 75 up to 100. Well, then we're amplifying this by 25. And 1903 gets me a maximum, and the maximum occurs at pi over two. We're done. We're done. All right, so let me just uh, do a bunch of these and see if you can pick up the pattern, and then we'll write them in a cosine function. I mean, I could write this right now as a cosine just to show you mechanically. It's very, very, very similar. Nothing changing here. The only thing that changes is zero is where the widths. Now there's a maximum, right? And that is the circumference of the circle right there. I'm starting at zero radius lengths. And when I start there, my width is a maximum. The maximum and the cosine occurs at zero, which means you really don't have to write that. And I think that's why textbooks generally well, they don't generally use this process. This is much quicker. But generally speaking, cosine curves are used at the max. But I think it's going to be easier to learn it from the context of sine function. And one of our identities that you're going to find out is the sine function. The sine of an angle is the same as the cosine of an angle minus 90 degrees. I mean, that's all I did here is I just erased pi over 2. I took away pi over 2 and wrote it as a cosine curve. All right, I just planted a seed um, that you'll use in future studies when you start studying something called trig identities. All right, let's do four or five in a row very quickly. I will put down that, let's see, I don't know where I am in time-wise, so I don't have my glasses on. That doesn't record the time here. All right, and I'll put something in the uh, um, comment section about when we begin our, let's write these quickly and easily, all right? So that's happening right now. So let me change these numbers. It's quick if I erase everything. And we'll do five in a row with just some basic numbers. All right, let's try this one. Let's go from here to here. All right, let's go from uh, 1950. Let's say that that gets me 40 or something. And over here, let's say the year 2000 gets me 30. All right, you pause the video. I'm just going to write what's going on. Uh, and so I want that to act like pi over two. I'm sorry, 1950 to act like pi over two. So x minus 1950 gets me pi over two. Uh, I know that I'm going one revolution is two pi. So one pi, two pi, three pi, three pi. One and a half revolutions is what that's about, right? And that occurs in 50 years. And uh, my midline is between 30 and 40, which is 35, and my amplitude is five. If I was gonna do that uh, for the cosine curve, then all I would do is write um, uh, three pi. I didn't have to over 50. No, I'll just look here, x minus 1950. That's the same thing. You put those in a calculator, it's the same graph. All right, so let's try another one. At this time, let's start here. Start up here. Let's start here. All right, let's make that, um, I don't know, 1800. 1800, we had uh, 20 or something. All right, and over here. Let's go over here to uh, 1903. I don't know why I like 1903, but let's go from 20 to 100. All right, and you stop, pause the video, and you write that equation, and I'm going to write it here. All right. 
So I see 1,800 gets you 20. So 1,800, but I need an angle. X minus 1,800. Talking to that writing very well here. All right, so where's the minimum? Well, a minimum on a circle is here, and that's 3 pi over 2. So I want this to act like 3 pi over 2. Then I've got uh, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, two and a half revolutions later. I'm at a max of uh, 100, all right? And so I want that to occur in 103 years. Okay, and so now I just, the midline, what's between 20 and 100, new midline, 120 divided by 260, so I'm measuring from 60, and I can see 40 units of change. And I don't have to worry about plus or minus because the sine of three pi over two is negative one, right? Positive one at the top of the circle, negative one at the bottom. That's great. So let's put in 1903, see how it works. 1903 minus 1800 is 103, 103 is canceled. Five pi, five pi plus three pi over two. Well, here's three pi over two, five pi, one pi, two, three, four. Oh, five pi puts me in a max. And so what's the sign of that? Sign of that's positive one. And one times 40 is 40 plus 60 is 100. Might be easier to see the 1800 here. Uh, might be important for us to do that. 1800 minus 1800 cancels that. I'm at the sign of three pi over two. What's the sign of three pi over two? Negative one. Negative one times 40 is minus 40 plus 60 is your 20. Okay, and so what would the equation be if we were doing it as a cosine curve? And you can put some numbers in. It's pretty hard for you to do it at this point because you're just learning something about trig here. But it's still 5 pi. It's still 103. The only thing that we're doing is we're looking at a minimum and a minimum width. The minimum width is over here at pi. So I could change this to a negative and simply write x minus 1800. I'll throw 1800 in real quick. So that's zero. What's the cosine of zero? The cosine of zero is positive one. That's your maximum width. But we're multiplying positive one times negative 40. So negative 40 plus 60 gets me the 20. All right. All right, throwing a lot at you earlier, right? But you gotta start the conversation. I'm not asking you to know how to do this today. I'm asking you to know how to do it before the final test in midterm. You still got several weeks to figure this out. And I think five minutes a day, four days in a row, we'll get the job done for most of you. But you gotta consider these concepts. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do uh boom bitty 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 boom bitty. Okay, so let's start uh let's start here. Let's go back to this one. Let's go 2024. There's um 50 of something. And over here, let's go to here and let's say that this is in the year 3000. Do I want that? Uh two to three, yeah. I guess that's not too bad, huh? No, let's not. I don't want to do that. That's not right. Let's go to 2064. There, that's a little easier. Don't want any of these numbers to be too gigantic. All right, 30. All right, so what do we got? Let's just do it from left to right this time. What's between 30 and 50? 40. How do you get from 40 to 50? Some type of amplitude of 10. Let's write it as a sine function. I want my 20, well, let's just do it from the standpoint of left to right. So I've got one pi, two pi, three, four, five, six, seven pi. I've got three and a half revolutions, and that occurs in 24 to 64, 40 years. Of course, I've had a max, and I'm using the sine function, so I definitely want a pi over two. Oops, I broke my rule from left to right. I'm making 2024 20, equal to zero. That should get the job done. Okay, and if we wanted to get this as a cosine function, all we have to do is make that cosine. All we have to do is make that a zero. You don't even have to write it. Then it's a cosine function. So there's all kinds of ways to write this. But um, what's quick and easy for the brain to understand, I think working with the sine function is easier than working with the cosine. I told you why a little while ago. So let's get something that we can see happen uh, the last one we'll do is similar, but let's go up 100 each time. 
Let's go up 100 each time. Let's go up 100 each time. And let's go up 50 for radian measurements. All right, let's see if we can construct something that is user friendly. Let's start in the year 1200. All right, and let's say that we have 80 or something. All right, all right. And therefore, this would be 1300. We should be back to 80. This should be 1400. We should be back to 80. And this one should be 1500. We should be back to 80. And this one should be 1550. We should be at, let's say we go to 40. All right. So let's look at this equation. We'll just play with the side function. So what's between 80 and 40? Midline of 60 plus, how do we get from 60 to 80? An amplitude of 20. And the sine function creates numbers between plus and minus one. Well, if you go up, the biggest you can go up is 20. So the biggest you're ever gonna get is 80. And the smallest you can get is negative one. So the smallest you're ever gonna get is 40. I hope you see that. All right, so let's put our sine function which is based on angles. So we've got to convert 1200 into pi over two. So we've got X minus 1200 gets me the angle pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one. So that gets me the max. And let's go to 1300. 1300 minus 1200 is a change of 100. So what did I do? I went one revolution. Okay, so we put 1300 in. I hope you can see 100 cancels. And if 100 cancels, we're 2 pi plus pi over 2. Well, here's pi over 2 right here. And 2 pi means go around once. Ah, we're back to a max. We're back to 80. What happens if I went 200? 200 is two revolutions. Ah, oh, two revolutions should take me from here. One revolution, two revolutions, took me right back. So will six pi in 300, right? And then one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi, one more pi should take place in 50 years. Oh, yeah, we could have gone from 1200 to 1550 and said, oh, that's 350 years, and we've changed by three and a half revolutions. There's your equation. Okay. Yeah, and if I went backwards one pi, if I went backwards, now I've gone not seven pi, but eight pi. But I'm not starting from a 90 degree perspective, I'm starting from a 270 or three pi over two. I'm just measuring from there. All right, so I hope that if you're watching this, you're putting in responsible attention to what we're studying. And if you're not, well, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't be talking to me at midterm either. Oh, well, you will be, but you won't be saying much. All right, so I'm hoping that you give these concepts your effort, that you intellectually think about them repetitively, right? If none of this made sense, if 10 minutes ago, well, then you're not watching. Well, maybe you are. But when something doesn't make sense, just see it anyway. Then come back to it the next day. See it again. Think about it a little bit. If it still doesn't make sense, get away from it. Come back the next day, all right? Think about it again. Usually by day three, things are starting to connect a little bit. And by day four, oh, I see it. Okay, you're on the beginning of doing it yourself. And if you do one every day, every day, every day, and you've been doing that with the equation of a line, you know, it took you three or four days and, and you had an algebra one class and it still wasn't there. I don't think you're going to forget how to write the equation of alignment. You've been doing it for days and you're doing it like that. Just, just go on and just write. That means you've learned it. That means you understand it. All right. And that's what we're trying to get to with all of these algorithms.
because this algorithm can be written just as quickly as the equation of line if you put in the intellectual effort. All right, so try to do that. And uh, we'll give you the worksheets every day to see if you can write this. And if you can, you're going to get to 20 seconds. All right. Hope that helps. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs>